Hello, I'm Roberta Winters, President of the League of Women Voters of Radnor Township. We'd like to begin today's program by expressing our heartfelt appreciation to the staff of Radnor Studio 21 for their time and effort in working with the League to help our community understand that gerrymandering, it's local. As a part of our series, we have with us today those who are uniquely familiar with the impact of drawing ward lines in Radnor Township. As you may know, one of the commissioners that in fact helped draw the lines wished to achieve the establishment of brown boundaries that was to divide colleges and universities into different wards. The rationale for such was not to have ghost voters. Based on experience, elected of officials believe that students only vote in presidential elections and by dividing colleges and universities they have found that existing polling places in each ward can easily accommodate voters without long lines and unnecessary problems. However, there are unanticipated consequences for such decisions. Our program featuring representatives of Villanova, Cabrini, and Eastern will hopefully shed some light on this matter. I'd like to begin today by introducing two individuals who are keenly aware of the impact of ward lines on Villanova University. Laura Wagner is the Director of Government and Community Relations there, and I had the privilege of meeting with her while we were working on voter registration together. And also with her today is Olivia, and your last name, Olivia, is Snaker. 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 Snaker, thank you. And she's a sophomore chemistry major at Villanova. She's a native of Collegeville and also is chief of staff for the Student Government Association. Thank you both for coming. Thanks Thank for having, having us. And I'd like to begin with Laura. One of the first challenges we faced together was voter registration and how to fill out those forms. Yes. As you may recall, they required a street address and the dorms in several, are in several different places. How did you deal with that issue and include the name of the dorms? Well, we had um, focused on voter registration this past election in response to some feedback that we'd received from poll workers over the years um, about students arriving at the wrong polling location to vote. Um, and when we looked into it, we realized it's because we fall into four different wards on campus and students are registering with one university address, um, 800 East Lancaster Avenue. So while our students are very engaged and civi uh, civically minded, it's difficult for them to actually get to the polls and vote um, because there might be a possibility where they have to re-register each year based on the fact that um, they could move into a dorm their freshman year in one ward and then move into another dorm their sophomore year in another ward and so on and so forth. So. Um, we became aware of that and we created a form filled out by our mascot, Will D. Cat, um, which showed students how to fill out the form, what township they live in, um, and by putting our 800 East Lancaster address plus the apartment um, in the apartment um, section. section, we had um, asked them to put their dorm so that when they go to vote they will be broken down by the dorm. Um, and that helped our students. We put that in every freshman orientation packet. Um, we emailed that out through our student government, our campus activities team with student government. We had run a um, voter registration drive throughout the fall and those forms were handed out. Um, so we put those as far and wide as we could on campus and then as a follow-up to that we created a poster showing students based on where they live on campus and in which dorms they vote at this precinct location. Um, and again, we put that everywhere on campus. So it said, if you live here, you vote here. Um, and then we coordinated shuttles and Uber was offering free rides. Um, so we, had, we were coming in at all angles. <laughs> well, I know you really put forth a lot of effort on everybody's part to make sure that our students knew where to vote. And if you look at Villanova on the map, you can see, Olivia, that it's actually divided into four separate wards, just like the commissioners had intended. The green is in the seventh ward, the brown is in the second ward, the third is in the yellow ward, the yellow area, and the fourth ward is purple. So it really is confusing that kids have to change their registration when they move from one part of campus to another. Does this cause a problem for students? Uh, well, I found uh, you know, I had a unique opportunity through student government to partner with our campus activities team with helping with the voter registration drive. 
And you know, with that, I got to talk to a lot of my fellow uh, students at Villanova. And you know, for a lot of students aren't necessarily aware that they can register locally to vote. And then you know, coming up to the table and talking to us about the possibilities for voting um, on local matters, you know, they were deterred when they realized that you know they might very well have to re-register all four years uh, um, while they're at school. And I know personally, I'm from, as you said, half an hour from campus. And I personally chose to request an absentee ballot um, because just having to re-register every year, it, in my opinion, seemed a lot easier to go that route. Sure, and I think it's difficult with having to re-educate our students every year um, that they may need to re-register and that their location could be here one year and over here the next year. And um, a lot of our students, our freshmen and sophomores, are not allowed to have cars on campus. Um, some students don't have a car with them. So that creates a whole other aspect of having to have shuttles and ride share services or getting a ride from a friend. Um, so that's a unique challenge that uh, our students are faced because we don't have a polling location on campus. And also, I think some of the students, when they get to be juniors and seniors, may move off campus. So they may even move to another county. Yes, so we have students that live um, off campus in Radnor Township. Uh, Lower Marion, Tredyffrin, Haverford, Conshohocken. Um, we are spread out all over the place and that's a whole new difficult task of educating those students who aren't on campus who might not walk by the table at the, in the quad um, or who could have had one representative this year and then the next year they move into a completely different county and a different legislative district. Um, so I think that's very hard for our students to get to know their local representatives because they're always being bounced around. Well, I was looking at the Radnor map because I couldn't figure out what was going on. But actually, Villanova, as it exists right now, even if you live in dorms on campus, you could have two different elected state representatives because the area around Ithan Avenue is, is separated. So if you live on one side, you ha you're in the 166th district, and on the other side, you're in the 165th district. So that's hard for your representatives to really represent you because they will never know you, perhaps, except briefly. Sure. Yeah, and if you're yeah. voting in a primary for House seat, the people that you put on that ballot in May may not be the ones you're going to vote for in the fall. Yes. So that's really a double whammy. Yes. Yeah. It's really weird. And I'm not sure that even the commissioners who started the drawing those wards in Radnor and then the people who built upon those when they did the legislative districts figured out what a hardship it was going to be for students. And making it register and re-register just it seems like a terrible burden. I can't imagine the challenge you have every year to try to get people to register to vote and then change it again. So I can understand why people may choose to do absentee balloting, which again is a hassle because then they have to have stamps, they have to meet deadlines, and every state has different deadlines and every form is different and you can't just do it online and you have to have an excuse in Pennsylvania to vote and you have to register you don't have same day registration in Pennsylvania so I think we're kind of disenfranchising you which is I shouldn't say but it seems that way yeah so there's a lot of different ways that students can get information you can get it online um, you can get it you know just on your cell phone and I think we at the university are hoping to sort of compact and streamline that system so that we're viewed as a place that students can, you know, come to SGA or come to the campus activities team with a question and our offices can work together to answer that for every student because there's so much information out there. And I know the League of Women Voters provided cards so everybody knew how to go to the votespa.com yeah. website to find all the voter information and find out nonpartisan information about the candidates and vote 411. So I think, you know, working with Villanova, we've tried to make a difference, but I think it's still burdensome to students today. Yeah, and students are so heavily affected by their local officials, and I think it'd be really great, especially, you know, with students, when they get to the polls, having candidates have come to campus and speak to, with students, interact with them, give talks, things like that. Maybe we could even host a debate and, you know, really get students involved in the elections so that when they show up to the polls, they know who exactly they're voting for. Well, we had tried last year. <laughs> Maybe we'll try again. Yes, we'll definitely try We're again. persistent, <laughs> if nothing else. Yes. So you do think the students are eager to vote in elections? Absolutely, yeah. Students we have a are very civically-minded population at Villanova. Yeah. Well, that's great to know. And I think one of the things that's, that bothers me as a League of Women Voters person is one of the things that's important for new voters is to develop the habit of voting. And I think when we make so many 
changes, it's hard for you to actually develop a lifelong habit because voting is very important. Absolutely. I believe you have made some good suggestions about how to help. Do you have any other things you'd like to say, Olivia, that might help you? Yeah, well, I think um, one thing that Laura mentioned that I think would be really great moving forward is working to get a voting precinct on campus. That, I think, would be the biggest improvement we could make. And I think, personally, that's going to be a goal by the time I graduate, <laughs> is to get that on campus. I have a couple more years left to do that. Um, and even, you know, with only being in four separate wards, it's just even bringing it down to two would make such an improvement because it just it cuts the number of voting locations in half that students could go to and re-registering cut that down to especially with the new housing commons you know if depending on how they divide it students wouldn't have to re-register as many times well so redrawing the lines putting in polling places continue to educate students yeah. about the issues I think education is a big aspect of it um, it's a, bar a very heavy lift for us on campus with so many different groups um, working towards registering students and working with illegal women voters, um, the different colleges on campus. So that's going to be part of my job and our job at the university is really just streamlining that education and continually reminding students that we do fall in four wards. It is a task to re-register, um, but you know it is our duty to vote. And so, like I said, our students are very civically engaged and, and they want to vote. So making it a little easier for them to do so. Well, and I think with more students living on campus, it will be an opportunity for the commissioners who will be deciding our wards in the future to perhaps redraw those lines to make it more conducive for students to vote. Yes, and definitely having those local commissioners and our state reps on campus. Um, I think a lot of people think college students only vote in presidential elections. and as it becomes more cool, you know, to get involved. Um, that's a, a place where I think we can capitalize on, on bringing our local representatives to campus, getting to know them, getting to know the issues locally, and, and uh, working towards all working together. Well, you've really given us a lot of food for thought, Laura and Olivia, and right now, I'd like to um, thank you for your suggestions, and we will work with you to explore them, and letting us know specifically how those ward boundaries affect you and your students. Radna has two other universities in our township, Cabrini and Eastern, and I'd like to take a little more time on this issue and hear what's happening right there. So thank you again, Laura and Olivia. Thank, thank you for having us. <laughs> We're back again with gerrymandering. It's local with our focus on how the ward lines in Radnor Township impact our voters on campus. We are pleased to have two students, one from Cabrini and one from Eastern, to add to our conversation begun by the representatives from Villanova University. And I'd like to welcome today Suzanne Stahersky, a student at Eastern University. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you. And Nia Alvarez-Map, a student at Cabrini. Together, these schools house about 2,000 students on their campuses. Suzanne, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in politics? Yes, so my name is Suzanne. I was, was born, born in Lancaster, Lancaster County, um, but I spent part of my life growing up in Costa Rica. And I am a junior sociology and political science major at Eastern University. And my interest in politics really came through the political science department at Eastern. Um, they just started hosting so many very interesting events and it really got me interested in the major and I joined. Thanks. And then Nia, how about you? Hi, my name is Nia. I go to Cabrini University. I am a writing and philosophy major with a minor in political science. I am from New York City, Manhattan. And I've sort of been interested in politics since I was really young. My family's been into politics, and I remember my first ever election. We celebrate Election Day like a Christmas since I was like three years old. But then I really became active in like getting people to register to vote when I was 12. Wow, you've been at it for a long, long time <laughs> and making a difference. Well, I'd like our audience to look today, first of all, at how the ward lines impact Eastern University. And if you look at the map, you can see that Eastern University looks like it's cut between two wards. It's different colors. Does that seem to make an impact on how students vote? Because it looks to me like dormitories are in one part, dormitories are in another part. Is this a problem? Right, so our university campus is divided between two wards and two um, counties, part in Delaware County and 
um, part of the campus is in our neighboring county. However, Eastern has sort of come up with a solution to this issue. Um, Eastern has developed an internal um, mailing system. So all of our students register with one address, 1300 Eagle Road, um, and we register with that address. And through that, um, we all vote at the same polling location. Um, and likewise, our ballots and our ballots and our registration are sent to one Eastern mailing center that is then distributed internally by the university. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It makes it simpler, simpler, for, simpler for you. So, so you're, you're not like, like Villanova, Villanova, where you have, have to re-register when you move dorms. dorms. You're not like Villanova, where you may have one representative one year, another representative another year. You're not like Villanova, where you might vote in the primary for one candidate, but not be able to vote for them in the general election because you're in a different ward, or you may, in fact, have a different state representative. So it seems like Eastern was very clever in solving this problem. So. Thank you very much, Susie. So you've solved some of Villanova's problems. Now, let's look at Cabrini for a minute. Now, according to the Cabrini map, mm -hmm. unlike Eastern, you're at least all in one ward. And we're really grateful for that because imagine the two wards would be in two. In two. But, but same, same thing. thing like Susie, we have an intermail system, so we just recently moved to a different dorming area in Valley Forge. So if we didn't have that intermailing, I can, I can only imagine the ward system we'll be into. So because you have internal mailing, you don't have the same issues. Well, well you, you are, are very lucky, but you do have two counties in some cases at Cabrini. You do have, you know, part of you is in one township, part of you is in another township. And it's lucky your students have no dormitories and have, because of that single mailing address, it seems like you've made a difference. So, basically, one of you is in the first ward, right? You're in the first ward, you're in the second ward, but basically you're only divided by Eagle Road mm -hmm. for the most part. So, did you feel... Nia, at Cabrini, it was easy for kids to register and then get to vote? Um, I think, I think there was just this general wave of disinterest. Like, I would hate to say this, like, our school is very interested in social justice, but they don't understand how the voting process revolves around social justice. They're into protesting, but they're not into knowing the politicians to get their issues in the line. So my first job, especially with collaborating with my school social justice center, the Wolfington Center, was to get students aware of what is your interest and how do you get that interest through voting? And another issue that we tend to have as well was we have a lot of commuters on our campus, so they really felt uncomfortable whether to vote in our campus or vote back home and just sort of and explaining how each um, voting process in each different state relates to them. Some wanted to do absentee ballots, some wanted to just go back to their house, but they just really didn't know how to do it. So what our biggest issue was just telling them how to vote. Because they actually had three, three choices. choices. They could vote at Cabrini, mm -hmm. they could go back home and vote home, or they could do an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. And each one of those requires a different set of procedures. Mm -hmm. And if they mess up by one date or one deadline, they've lost that right. They lost that right for the year. And, and I, I really I, think it's important that you're trying to help students at all levels, at all of our universities, to understand that you can march all you want. You can sign all the petitions that you want, but unless you put your voice to the voting machine, mm -hmm. it doesn't make the differences that you're trying to advocate. Especially for, for certain social issues. issues that are always on the line as of recently, such as immigration or education. These things people will love to protest and talk about, but their, their politicians and officials will not listen to them if they don't see that you're a constant constituent that's voting for these issues. Well, I, know I know even, even myself, myself when, when I send, I send a, postcard a postcard to a legislator, I have to put my name and address so they know I'm a real constituent of theirs, mm -hmm. otherwise they sometimes ignore you. Mm -hmm. What about um, you, Susie? Did you um, have experiences like Nia when it came time to register students to vote? Yes, yeah, so there were some organizations on campus who were, who were helping to get students registered to vote. However, um, that centered around Pennsylvania voting, so some of our students who are out of state um, didn't have as much access to information about their state's guidelines, so they were kind of on their own to figure that out. Um, also, word of mouth is a big way to get things to happen around Eastern, so it was really cool to see students helping others register to vote. Um, if people had questions, they knew like who they could talk to, which kinds of students would have the answers. So it was a kind of a community effort to make sure that people were registered for the midterm elections. Did you find that true at 
Cabrini as well? Same, Same but, but we sort of expanded it more into other states. We realized that we have students from all the way from Connecticut down to Maryland. So what we'll do is go to different classes to just sort of and act, give like a sort of a survey to say what class, I mean, what state are you from? And then we'll give workshops on how to register to vote in your state if you want to vote in your state. We mainly did Pennsylvania state voter registrations to show like on our, we actually went to classes and showed through online registration how to vote in Pennsylvania. But if they really wanted to vote back, back at their original hometown, then we'll show them exactly how to do it at our center and as well as give them absentee ballot rules. So bottom line is you found going into, into classes, classes was much more effective than maybe tabling on campus? Very, it was, it was very really helpful. Important. I think most, most students, students are afraid to go up to tablings, especially since they feel as if they are 18, 20, 21. Some, even some faculty and staff just didn't know how to re-register themselves. And just to have that comfortability saying, look, we are all new to this process or we're all like mm -hmm. learning again, then it's like it gives this more comfortability and just more of a Nice and nicer environment when it comes to politics. Well, well I, know I know one of the issues that we heard about at Villanova was they, because they have different wards, they have different polling places. Is it easy for you at Eastern to get to your polling place? Mm, that I think is a little bit more complicated. So as you know, um, um, Radnor, Radnor doesn't, doesn't really have a lot of public transportation around here. And so a lot of our freshmen and sophomores don't have cars. Um, so getting to your polling location can definitely be more complicated. I know for me, I had a friend take me because I don't have a car, um, but some people will have to pay for their for a Lyft or an Uber um, or ask a friend. Um, I know that some people have even walked to the polling station, to the polling place. And I think if you looked at that map of the polling yeah. places, everything, everything is, is sort of downtown. Of mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm really grateful. Me and the Wolfenstein Center are really grateful that we worked out a way to schedule um, from nine o'clock to all the way to the ending of polling stations to be able to vote in that district because if God forbid, I mean, God forbid or anyone else was unable to get there, how would they be able to vote? Right, and the polling mm -hmm. places are in downtown Wayne. They're not really at all convenient for you. Right. And one of the things I found really interesting when I was trying to figure out how Eastern and Cabrini are cut up and why Eastern has its own precinct did you know Eastern can vote all alone from the rest of Radnor Township? I didn't know that until you brought it to my attention. So when you look at the map with the scale along the side and the little color coding, that you can see that in fact, just like Villanova, you could have two different representatives and you're only across the street from mm -hmm. each other. So well, if, if you, you look, look at, at one, one of those lines going across that does like a loop-de-loop, -loop, those people in that precinct, which is called 2-3, have Representative O'Mara. The rest of them have Representative Vitale. And you're in the same district, I believe, as Cabrini, but the rest of your ward isn't. Mm -hmm. so, so it's, it's really, really strange. strange. So you've talked about how you get to the polls, and it's the challenge there, but can you imagine how difficult it would be if there were four wards? And I mean, you're only in one, right? Yep. And you're just trying to get students to one polling place mm -hmm. that's not terribly convenient, but they've got to figure out how to get them to four. Yeah. So do you have any other experiences you'd like to share with us, Susie, about voting or the voting process at, at Eastern? Eastern? Yeah. yeah, I think um, one other thing that it was a little complicated in voting this year is when you go to the um, polling location, there were two different tables. And so me and several others um, were late waiting in this long line to vote. And when we got to the table, we realized that we were at the wrong table and we had been waiting in this line and that we had to go wait in a different line. Um, and so that I, there just weren't like some clear instructions for that. So that caused some confusion for us as well. Because I think there are two different precincts that vote right. in the same location. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really confusing. Mm -hmm. What about you? Did your students, did you have any experience you'd want to share? Well, something like that. It was our, when it came time for voting on November 6th, it was such a long line that many students got sort of down trying and we had to sort of encourage them to just stay on the line because if you lose your spot, then you have to really start all over again. But my biggest concern and the Wolf in the Center's biggest concern was during actual voting processes, during when we did online application, because there was just a huge scare that many um, boards, Board of Elections weren't able to get our um, applicants processed so we would have to call day and night to make sure that these applicants were going through and processing in a correct manner in state because we would really hate if they weren't able to vote this year well i know we have you know vote spa pa or vote pa dot 
com where you can check your voter registration. Mm -hmm. But as you say, say when, when people, people are unsure, you can do it online, but I'm glad you called and followed through because I know we've had issues in Delaware County before where applications have not been properly processed and would-be voters are discouraged. Yeah. And I think the other thing a lot of students don't understand is the first-time voters in different wards need to have ID. So Villanova students are going to have to ID whenever they go to a new ward. So it's really... Um, I would say disenfranchising young voters, although I shouldn't say that probably aloud. <laughs> so on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I want to thank you both for coming today and Susie and Nia for sharing your experiences and challenges related as to us as students in Radnor Township. Your comments, along with those of our Villanova representatives that you heard from today, Laura and Olivia, have provided a valuable perspective to those of us who live in Radnor. And we again want to express our appreciation now to you, our audience, for your continued time and interest in helping to make every eligible, vo eligible voter vote and each vote count. That's how we can all make democracy work. Remember, gerrymandering, it's local. And if you would like to see all of our series on gerrymandering, it's local, please look to the schedule on Radnor Studio 21 and also on our website where they will be linked by YouTube at a later date. Also, we are lucky because Radnor has on our township website a list of voter information with an interactive map so you can see where your voting places are, how the wards are divided, and how the lines that have been drawn by our commissioners impact your ability to have a voice and a vote in how local government, state government, and federal government impact you and your lives. Remember, gerrymandering, it's local. Your voice makes a difference. Thank you.